So, Llama 2 has been out for a few weeks now and it's a compelling model to work with due to its open source nature and commercial license. So that means that unlike OpenAI's ChatGPT, you can take it and run it on your own hardware, fine tune it and play with its larger context window. I have a feeling Meta is going to go from strength to strength in its open source releases, so it's worth getting to know this model and playing with it. Right now, you can test it on Hugging Face, you can install it locally if you have a powerful enough machine, and you can run it on services like Google Collab or RunPod. What I'm interested in doing, however, is setting up my own model so that I can access it in a via, via a scalable machine in the cloud. So this is critical if I want to add the power of Llama to any web-based app or user interface I might develop for my consulting clients. In this case, Amazon SageMaker could be a good choice. SageMaker is AWS's platform for all things machine learning. It allows you to deploy an existing instance of Llama 2 and then use AWS Lambda serverless functions and the API gateway to create a web-based API for the Llama model. Bear in mind that this can be costly depending on the type of machine instance you use. In this tutorial, I'm going to use a large instance. You can check the pricing in the link in the description as it may change. I'd recommend only running this intermittently or choosing the smallest possible instance for your needs. For the tutorial, I've gone large just to speed things up. If you're an entrepreneur or product leader and are interested in how AI can be leveraged in your business or apps, consider subscribing to my upcoming newsletter and I'll be adding some new courses over the coming months at boostling.com. So once we've logged into AWS, we want to find SageMaker. So you can just type in Sage in the search bar and you'll find it here. And it should take you to a page that looks a bit like this. So we want to create a domain. So let's go to domains and let's click create domain. So I'm going to call this Llama Rob Shocks. And we need to create a user profile to work with this domain. So we can go with the default here, make sure that it's got Amazon SageMaker execution role. And let's click submit. And that can take a few minutes to get set up. So go make a cup of coffee and get ready for the next step. Okay, so after a few minutes, it should be ready. So just click on domains. We're already there. You'll see Lama Rob Shocks is listed here. Let's just click on that. Then you'll see the user profiles and we want to launch the studio. Give this about two to three minutes and then it's going to start up for you. So be patient. Okay, from within the SageMaker studio, we go down to SageMaker Jumpstart and then Model Notebook Solutions. And here you can see under the various different models and solutions, the Llama 2 7 billion chat model. Um, you can actually run the 70 billion as well, but just bear in mind that it's going to need to run on a much larger instance and be a little bit more expensive. So um, we're just gonna run with this for now. So you can look in the deployment configuration, you can see the instance that you're running and you can check the pricing on that as well separately uh, if it's a concern. So from here, let's just hit deploy. Okay, so the model is running and it's actually going about creating an endpoint. So it says it might take five to 10 minutes so you can sit back and relax. So our endpoint is ready. Important to make note of the endpoint name and we can test it out by opening it in studio. So let's give that a go. So we've got a notebook starting based on that endpoint. We're going to run through these commands once it's up and running. So let it get started first. Okay, so it took about two or three minutes for that note. So once we've logged into AWS, we want to find SageMaker. So you can just type in Sage in the search bar and you'll find it here. And it should take you to a page that looks a bit like this. So we want to create a domain. So let's go to domains and let's click create domain. So I'm gonna call this Llama Rob Shocks. And we need to create a user profile to work with this domain. So we can go with the default here, make sure that it's got Amazon SageMaker execution role and let's click submit. 
giving you a couple of different examples here of inputs that you can use. So we're just going to go with what's there for now. Um, also important to note, you might see some errors that come through around the acceptance of the EULA. Um, so it's important that you've got that set to true and not set to false. You can see it being passed in here as a custom attribute as well. You may need to pass that through as a header later on when you're creating the API gateway. But if you do see that come up as an error in your response, you'll know where to start troubleshooting. So let's click this and run. That's fine. And then this is actually taking the uh, dialogues from up above and running them through. So this is basically running our final command. So you're going to wait uh, a minute or so to get your first response. Okay, great. So we have our output user. What is the recipe of mayonnaise? And the assistant is giving us the feedback. And then it's also running through the other dialogues in the array that we had set up. Okay, that's great. So if you actually want to change the input here and say, what is the recipe of leek soup? Let's run this one again. So that's saved. We don't need to run this one again, but we do need to run this. And let's see what the output is and if it changes. Perfect. I'm glad you're interested in learning about leek soup. However, I must inform you that I cannot provide you a recipe. Okay, so this is a bit ridiculous. The safety levels for llama are still quite high. Um, I cannot provide you with a recipe that may cause harm or promote unethical practices. It's leek soup, llama. Come on. Um, I'm hoping the censorship of this model changes uh, over time. And I think I'm starting to see feedback from Meta that that is the case. But anyway, for now, that's exactly what we wanted and we got the correct response. So we're all good in terms of notebook setup. So of course, what we really want is an API endpoint so that we can access Llama 2 via any kind of user interface that we want to create, not just locked inside the SageMaker or Jupyter Notebook. So in order to do that, we're going to need two things. We're going to need uh, Lambda serverless functions, and we're going to need an API gateway, both from AWS. So let's start with the Lambda serverless function. So to find that, go to your search bar and click Lambda. And let's navigate straight there. OK, so click on functions and then let's click create function. We want to author one from scratch and we're going to call this Llama request. And the model we're going to use is Python 3.10. And the architecture is 86. And we don't need any other permissions. Let's click create function. So if you haven't used Lambda before, essentially what it is, it's Amazon's version of serverless functions. So instead of setting up your own server to handle input requests and outputs, you actually just set up a serverless function by itself. It sits on the AWS hardware and it only gets run whenever it's invoked. So instead of it being constantly on a server that you're paying for that's running constantly all the time, it only gets run whenever it gets hit. So that's generally a big saving over the long term. Each function is basically setting up a little piece of logic that you want to run and this is an example case here. Okay, so I've replaced the boilerplate with this code. Let me talk you through it. We're importing Bodo3 and JSON, which is needed in the script. Then we're setting up our endpoint name, that's here. And remember, we took that from uh, SageMaker and you can go to endpoints here and this is your endpoint. You can also put this in as an environment variable in the configuration, which is better practice, but I'm just using this to show you here how it all works. So we're invoking the runtime, we're passing in that endpoint name, and then we're taking the body from the JSON that's being sent. So we're gonna post a, 
uh, a query to the endpoint and uh, in the JSON body, there's going to be the information that we want for our prompt. So we're going to be taking that and destructuring it, uh, sending it to the endpoint, and then we're going to be uh, sending back the result then again. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have the right permissions associated with the role, uh, the Lambda role uh, of this function. So we need to go to configuration and we've got permissions here and then we're going to click on Lambda request role. Basically, this was the default execution role that was assigned um, when we set up the Lambda function. Uh, but we needed one extra one, which is giving Amazon SageMaker full access. Now, this is actually overkill. You don't need to give this function full access at all. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just uh, giving you this role and this permission just because it'll give you the least amount of errors when you're troubleshooting. But at a later stage, you'll want to revoke a lot of this access and narrow it down to what is required by uh, the function just for the best security. So make sure you've got this and this. So now we have our Lambda function set up. We want to be able to trigger that Lambda function, Lambda request from the API. And that's where API gateway comes in. So here, let's add a trigger and let's pick a source. It's going to be API gateway. So we're going to create a new API but as a HTT API, we're going to set the security to open and let's click add. Okay, so the trigger has been successfully created and we can see it here. And here is the API endpoint. So let's copy our API endpoint and open Postman. If you're not familiar with Postman, basically it's a way to simulate API requests. So Let's create a new request here. I'm going to set it to post. I've pasted in the URL that we just copied. And the other thing we want to do is put in our JSON request. So that needs to go into the body and set to raw and also set to JSON. You'll find the link to this JSON in the description. So we're passing in our system prompt, you're an expert copywriter, and we're passing in the content, which is write me a tweet about superconductors, pretty topical at the moment. And let's click send. So you see it's sending the request. And here is our response. Um, unlock the secrets of superconductors. And here we have some emojis. These materials can transfer energy with zero resistance, revolutionizing industries from energy to medicine. Perfect. So there we go. Now, once you have this response, you'll want to be able to destructure it in your user interface or app. And you can also set up what kind of an output you get by changing the Lambda function so it posts exactly what you want. You can set it up so that you're posting in a lot of different parameters. Take a look at Llama and the docs to see exactly what you can send. You can change the roles, you can send multiple prompts, and you can receive your responses in various different ways. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. It can take days to create these tutorials, so a simple like and subscribe would really give me the motivation to keep pumping them out. If you run into issues, drop your question in the comments and I'll do my best to help. Make sure to delete the domain when you're done or it's going to rack up costs that you don't want. And make sure you're running a server instance at a size that's okay with your budget. Very important to check that. If you're having trouble with the Lambda function, I recommend Stack Overflow and also inputting the code and errors into ChatGPT to get suggestions. Also, don't forget to add some authentication and adjust your permissions to increase security if you move this into production. So I hope all this helped and let me know what you're building in the comments. If you're interested in more tutorials about AI, subscribe.